On the surface of it, I think some people, they don't really understand how glass works, and so there's a little bit of a fear of something new, something that's very much, you know, I'm wearing, so you're very aware of it. The reason we're in Austin is because we're taking glass to a number of cities in the U.S. because we really want people to see it. When people kind of first look at it, they're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure how that works. They're like, well, here, try it on. And when they try it on, they kind of see the screen, and they do a fun Google server, then they kind of get, they get really excited about it, and it's demystified for them. The way we interact with technology is pretty broken. I mean, if you walk around the street, you see everyone's looking down. Like the main impetus behind glass was just like the, the idea that we want to free ourselves from that technology. We can make eye contact. My ears are unblocked, my hands are free. So you really feel like you can go about your day doing all the things that you love to do and quickly get some, some information. You know, if you quickly want to do a quick Google search or send an email or get a response to a text, you can do it very quickly so you're not wasting a lot of time haven't come out publicly with a consumer launch date because we want to be sure that the software and the hardware are the best that it possibly can be. And then also socially, we want to make sure that people you know, have enough of an understanding about glass that, that it doesn't come out and people are kind of nervous about it or don't really understand it. I think the norms or the acceptable practices are just going to develop themselves, right? Like, you know, Bluetooth headsets. People are going to eventually, you know, get shushed on an airplane or get shushed at a restaurant and then they're going to learn that kind of a thing. It's going to be, I think, acceptable in certain places, acceptable elsewhere. I wear it every day just to, like, more or less think of new ideas, right? I mean, you're not going to know what you're going to use it for or have an idea of potential unless you just wear it when you're doing things right to think of ideas. One really interesting use case is this idea of kind of like virtual teaching. So we did have a pro professor who went to CERN and he in Switzerland and he actually biked through the Hydrogen Collider and did a hangout with his physics class back in Michigan to give them this experience or even like cross collaboration with students in different cultures. You know, say you're in a French class and you actually did something with a French class in Lyon and they were taking you on a tour of the town and you were kind of able to see these buildings or had this very, again, like immersive experience.